So uh, we're heading back into Bermuda and you can see on the screen there I've got a course, I've got a route in and um, what I'd like to do is lay down a track. So it's quite a simple operation of pressing start in the middle of the screen, press start, the green start, and there you go, we should be laying down the track. So let's zoom in see if we can see our track. It's really handy to have a track line because you can see the uh, difference between your heading and your course over ground laid down on the screen, which is very useful. Let's just turn the uh, tablet around and at the top. We should get there we are, our track details. So we've got our speed, 8.2 knots, we are really flying tonight. Uh, distance we've travelled, 0.1. And the total time. If you put your finger on the top of the screen and just move it to the right, you get up your course details, your route details. 7.2 knots, we're 34.5 miles away from Bermuda, on a bearing of 245. And then you can move it back and get the details. Down the bottom, you can control what you're doing. So you, if you press, you press stop, you, you can save your track, or you can pause your track, or you can delete it. Um, save tracks are very nice, you can see where you've been. So once you've saved a track, if you click on menu, and you'll see your main screen, if you go into tracks, click on tracks, there you'll see your track. If you press on track, you can, first of all you can see the length of it, 3.1 miles, 25 minutes, and an average speed of 7.2 knots. If you click on it, you can see a few more details, your maximum speeds and uh, time, your current versus average, those sorts of things. The other thing you can do with it is you can see the little pen mark next to track 01 if you touch that and delete what it's called, you can call it what you like, Bermuda Inbound, I'm going to call that one, and that will just save automatically. The other thing you can do is press play, and you can see where you've been, your speeds at the time, and the little pin runs down the line, it's quite fun. Let's go back. There we go, back to tracks, and that'll be saved. Remove it inbound, and your tracks. So, to connect Navionics to the chart plotter, you first have to go to the chart plotter. We've got a BNG system here. Go into settings, scroll down to wireless, and you can see there, you can connect your phone or your tablet. Click phone or tablet, scan the QR code, the password's there. It's very simple on this system. Most of these systems have got a password, as long as you know that. You can uh, get on and synchronize your Navionics to chart plotter. I'll show you how to do it on Navionics now. On your phone or your tablet, open settings, turn on the Wi-Fi, and you should be able to find your chart plotter. Ours is Zeus 3. Click on that. And it should connect to the chart plotter. Once you've done that, open up Navionics. Go to menu. Go to paired devices. And there you'll see um, the chart plotter wireless. And you can pair your device. You can see mine's already connected automatically. Zeus 3 connected. And you can start a sync. So it will sync the same information as on the chart plotter. And it brings up the AIS that the vessel has. 
and you can see all the ships around you. Let's have a look here. You move the cross to above the ship and the details come up as you can see. Hippocampe, let's click on Hippocampe. A sailing vessel, it gives its MMSI number, its location, its call sign. Uh, its closest point of approach is 3.9 nautical miles. Total time to closest point of approach, 24 minutes. It gives me its speed, 3.7 knots, and its bearing, 38.8 degrees. Its size, 59 foot, a lovely boat. And you can close that and uh, turn back to the screen. It's very useful. Check out who's around you. There he is, Hippo Campe. And we are currently on a mooring buoy of Dominica. Uh, I put in my route for tomorrow and we're going up the coast of Dominica, the west coast, and then up the west coast of Guadeloupe. But I'd like to know what the tide's doing up there. I'm going to get up there in the evening, I'm going to anchor. I want to know what sort of tidal range there is around. So I can zoom into Guadeloupe and have a look for a tidal gauge. You can see there's two here. Here's one and here's another. Santa Rose, it's near where I'm going to anchor. So if I put my crosshairs on Santa Rose and, and press on Santa Rose, it will bring up the tidal curve, which is really good. You can see in the morning at at 7.57, the tidal height is 0.54 meters. And you can see in the evening tomorrow at 17.28, it is 0.2 meters. On the tidal graph here, you can see it always specifies the Atlantic standard or the time, your, your time zone you're in. It's very important to check you're in the right time zone. Atlantic standard time. Um, so I can move my finger along as well. So if we slide this graph along, you can see the little round black circle moving. On the left hand side, it's giving you the time and the tidal height. You can see above on the chart as well, that you've got the blue water rising and the arrow rising. These tidal heights are always blue when the water's rising. As you come up to the top, it'll change red. And the red is the tide has fallen. So if you're looking at your chart on Navionics and you see some tidal height and it's in red, the tide is falling. If it's in blue, the tide is rising. So you can slide it all the way down to 1728. And there's the bottom of the tide. From this, you can instantly work out the range. At high tide it's 0.54, at low tide it's 0.2, that means you've got a tidal height of 0.34. Very quick and very easy to use these tidal gauges. You can run along the tide and work out tides. There you go.